Welcome back to Whiskey Bonded. I'm Conrad, and today we're going to do a totally blind tasting with a blind barrels blind tasting kit. This should be a whole lot of fun. Stick around, we'll see if I can totally botch this. So Blind Barrels is a company that's basically making these really cool tasting kits that come with four different samples, and you have no idea what they are other than a couple of little clues given to you on the little breakdown. Now, this is one from earlier in this year, so I'm not spoiling anything for anybody if I reveal what they are. They give you little hints like uh, an aptly named Solera blend. Uh, Solera blend is, is the idea of blending younger and older whiskeys together to kind of keep a consistency of profile and be able to use some of the older stuff in the air together. Um, but we're not even going to get too into that. I'm just going to grab myself a piece of paper to make some notes, and we're just going to get into these four samples and see... Uh, kind of what it's like. I, I love this idea because it comes with a little a paper that gives you an idea of tasting notes to kind of give your brain a little bit of work. I know that I do that when I do tasting. Uh, I tend to, to try and have a little clue like this or a cue to kind of say, uh, what is that I think that I'm doing? It helps with memory recall. So that's really helpful. Uh, they also have themes. This one is actually themed Young Americans. I don't know if you can see that. That's kind of cool. So we're going to set this out here and basically just break into these four samples that are numbered or lettered rather uh, A, B, C, and D. And there's a little notation on here uh, that this is actually the June of 2023 release. You can actually sign up for these blind barrel uh, things and they'll send them to you kind of on the regular. It is great for, t uh, for training your palate or we'll see how good it is for training your palate. So we'll see if I can. Uh, I'm probably just going to completely mess this up. So let's get started. We'll start with a, makes sense to me, right? Start with A, sure. So anytime that I'm tasting, obviously I'm gonna have a fresh Glen Cairn for each sample, and I'm also gonna have a glass of water just to kind of cleanse the palate a little bit. Uh, sometimes I will actually spit a little bit when I'm sampling. We're not gonna do that because that's nasty for a video. So let's just go ahead and get into number one. I got my little piece of paper here I'm gonna make some notes on uh, so that I can remember what I said. And when I go to reveal it, which you do by scanning the little QR code, on the sample uh, to reveal what it is. <clears throat> we'll see if I was right a little bit, right a lot, or just completely off base on this whole thing. So I do gotta tell you, I do not have a great natural palette. Uh, my wife does. She's actually quite good at this. I kind of struggle with it a little bit sometimes. So like I said, this could be a total disaster um, or I could look like a rock star at anywhere in between. So just off the start, you can see that that's got a little bit of uh, a color to it, uh, maybe. Maybe even a slight reddish hue, which is interesting. I'm go ahead and take a sniff. Y'all always ask why you don't see me smelling and tasting a whole lot, because I'm gonna cut a lot of this out of that video so you don't have to sit there and watch me make faces as I smell again and again and again. So right off the beginning, I'm definitely getting sweet, uh, honey, maybe brown sugar and some fruit notes. Definitely something sweet. Okay, okay. I'm going to go ahead, my first guess, I'm going to go ahead and say that that is a bourbon. So, sample one, we'll go ahead and say it's a bourbon. Um, I'm not going to get super brave on these. I'm not going to try and guess the distiller or the mash bill. That, I tell you what though, I am going to say that does feel like that is a finished. There's definitely a wine or sherry to that. It's actually quite nice. It does not a lot of burn to it. Definitely rye in there. Getting a little coffee note on the end. On the palate, I'm getting some nut, a little bit of maple, kind of a clove note. So I'm gonna write down bourbon. I'm gonna write down maple. I'm gonna write down clove. I'm gonna write down nutty. And I'm going, and I'm gonna write down coffee on the finish. I am gonna guess, I'm gonna guess wine finish of some kind. It could definitely be a sherry, but I'm gonna say wine on this one. It's just giving me that sweet note. We were just out uh, tasting some wine finished bourbon, so that seems really, really similar, uh, familiar to me. The proof is not super high. I'm gonna say the proof on that is probably low, maybe 90, 95. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm gonna say 90 to 95 proof on that one. That's actually very good though. That's a super easy one to drink. Oh, that is sample A. Uh, not bad, not bad. Uh, let's move on to do sample B. I'm gonna try and move along on this because I'm sure you guys don't wanna watch 49 minutes of me tasting whiskey. I see sample B, so I don't know if you can see that or not, but the only thing on the bottle is a B. There is no indication of anything. Pour a little in a fresh Glencairn. Took a little sip of water. Kind of cleanse the palate out a little bit. I do like to leave them set in the glass for just a minute before I taste them. 
Um, pretty nice color on that one too. Um, that's, that's a nice color too. I mean, it's bourbon colored, shocking. It's already got a little more ethanol on it. Uh, that's gonna come across as higher proof even just on the nose. But smell, this smells younger for sure. Definitely tastes younger. Definitely a higher proof. I'm getting more citrus notes. Maybe an apple. Uh, maybe some, some cereal grain on there. A little ginger on the palate. The nose is just apple to me. Apple and cereal grains, which tends to be something that I get in younger whiskey, but I don't know, maybe not. It's hard to say, but I'm gonna guess this is younger. So I'm gonna write down uh, apple. I'm gonna write down cereal. I'm gonna write down young. It's definitely a higher proof. I'm getting a little bit longer finish, and a little berry and honey. I'm gonna put honey on there too. I'm gonna guess this is a calf strength, but not a super high proof calf strength. Uh, it's definitely younger, probably still a bourbon. Um, I'm not going to write down bourbon because I'm not 100% sure on that, but um, it is kind of prickly. It's possible that it's this rye, like a high corn rye, but probably a bourbon. But I'm going to guess the proof at 100 and... I'm just going to use round numbers, y'all. I'm paying, saying 117 and a half. It's just going to be ridiculous. So I'm going to say 115 proof on that one. Pretty good. Pretty good. Uh, definitely got some nice characteristics to it that I like. It's a little punchier. Uh, it's younger, which I don't necessarily mind, but definitely not as good as the first sample. But there you go, there's sample B. I wrote down apple, cereal, young, honey, cask strength, 115. Let's move on to sample C. All right, so sample C seems to have a darker color than the first two. Uh, it could be an indication of finishing. It could be an indication of age. Oh, that's nice. That one's kind of got a cola scent to it, some berries. A little bit of sweet sugar, white sugar, not brown sugar. Uh, this definitely smells a little more mature. We'll give it a taste. Okay, that's interesting. Okay, I'm getting orange and tobacco. A little bit of pepper, but very subtle, not pricky, prickly. Uh, the finish on this one is longer. Wow, that's actually really nice. I'm gonna say bourbon on this one. This might be a little bit older. I can't tell if it's age or there was that hint about Solara in there. That might be our Solara finish because there is some, some maturity to that. Because uh, it, it comes across as a higher proof, but very subtly so. I'm gonna guess that this one is probably around the same, around that 115 mark. So on C, I'm going to say, so on C, I'm gonna say older. I'm gonna say cask. I'm gonna say, uh, berry, cola, tobacco, and I'm going to go ahead and guess. I'm going to go ahead and put it at 115 again. I mean, it could be 120, but uh, man, it's hard to say. I'm going to say 115. So on C, I'm going to put older cask, berry, cola, tobacco, and I'm going to guess 115. That one's actually really nice. That could be finished. You know, for C, I'm going to add finished. Man, I can't tell what though. Ugh, this fucking, that's hard. This blind tasting is not easy. So C, I'm gonna put older, cask, berry, cola, tobacco, 115 for the proof and finished. Uh, that's actually really nice. I really, really like that one. Something in that finishing note though is getting me. Uh, may not be finished, but there's a note in there that seems like something that was added in, thrown in there, and I can't, I can't put my finger on it. Let's move on to the last one for D. And then we'll reveal if I was way right or way wrong. So D has got kind of a nice color to it. It's very maple-y color. There's a little bit more red to it. Uh, that that was something that I thought might be a, a finishing, a wine finishing on the first sample, but this is not, is a little different. It's very tobacco-y colored. Oh, wow, okay. That's got a lot going on. So there's a sweet note on this one on the nose. Possibly kind of a leather note. A little bit of kind of a, a milky chocolatey note and some sweetness, some, some honey and some fruit. The palate has got something on it that makes me feel like sherry, but it's very subtle. Well, first of all, D I think is the best of them. I like this one a lot. Uh, there is kind of a nutmeggy honey note on it, on the palate. Uh, the finish is really, really long with baking spices and a little bit of a nutty note. But there is something in this fruity. It's like a sherry that just kind of holds across the nose, the palate, and the finish. So on D, I'm going to put coffee, sherry, fruit, honey, uh, 
Baking spices. Man, I'm gonna go 115 on the proof again on that one. Okay, so on this last one, I'm gonna say finished. Coffee, sherry, fruit, honey, baking spices, and 115 proof. So uh, that's actually really good. I really like that one a lot. I'm gonna be curious to find out what that is. So there we go. There is A, B, C, and D applied barrels. Now for the reveal. Here's how this works. You gotta scan the QR code and it's gonna pop up and give you what your samples were. So let's see what mine were. I pulled it up over here on my laptop. I got it over to the side over here so you guys hopefully won't be able to hear the fan. Uh, I've scanned the QR code and I'll show you what it looks like on the screen there. It's gonna give you a little video intro from the guys, the name of this, uh, this particular packaging, the Young Americans release. And then it's going to give you little envelopes revealing the samples. So let's take a look at them. So here we go. So sample A. Remember, sample A, I said it was a bourbon. I put maple, clove, nut, coffee, wine finished, which would be sticking it out there the farthest, and a proof of 99.95. Let's go ahead and look at the reveal. Okay, so A was three chords, strange collaboration, Pinot Noir finished bourbon. So, fantastic. I get the wine finished I got. I wouldn't have put Pinot Noir on it, uh, but it is a bourbon and it is wine finished. That's fantastic. So this is, it says it is a 49.5% ABV, a two to six year age statement, which I don't know how you have a two to six year age statement. That seems like an ages statement. It is a 75% corn, 29% rye, 4% malted barley. Fantastic, so it is a bourbon. Uh, some aroma notes, uh, sweet raspberry, cherry, melon, brown sugar, grapefruit, Pinot Noir. Uh, the tasting is maple, peanut, strawberry, currant, toffee, vanilla, and a finish that is coffee, toasted wood, and ripe plum. You can see I got a few of those there right, but uh, it is really difficult to do this. You're not gonna hit them all, and I can't tell you that I came up with all that stuff. Uh, I don't know about peanuts. I don't know that I got any pea. I mean, I guess I put nut in there. I definitely didn't get any melon, but uh, that is actually really fantastic, that three quarts bourbon. I do not know what the price on that is. The cool thing about Brian Buy Barrel is, is you can actually click the old buy now and actually buy the bottle that you saw if you are a member of Blind Barrel. Uh, so you can just say, hey, I really, really love that. I want to get it. So you can actually buy it. So let's take a look at what number, what B is. So letter B, what is letter B? I'm going to go ahead and click the sample to reveal. B is Rocktown. Rocktown single barrel cast strength straight bourbon whiskey. Never heard of it out of Little Rock, Arkansas. Fantastic. Golden Promise cast strength bourbon. So I uh, got the cast strength right. I think that was pretty obvious. I nailed the proof on that one. Holy crap, 115. Total guess, total guess. I could tell it was a cast strength, but it's very reminiscent of the Redwood Empire cast strengths to me, which are the 114, 116 range. Uh, cast strength, but not crazy proofy. It definitely didn't come across as higher than, than 115, but uh, it says straight bourbon whiskey, three-year age statement. Um, I said young. I guess three years is young. That's young-ish. It does taste a little younger than that to me. I said apple, cereal, honey, and cask strength. So this says it's 82% corn. Wow, I did not pick up on that. That it was 82% corn. That might be why it comes across so young to me is the high corn content. Uh, it is thyme, lemon, green apple, licorice, cereal uh, grain notes, which I definitely got the cereal grain notes. It was really, really apparent. I think is the high corn. Uh, tasting notes were herbal, brown sugar, burnt oak, ginger, and effervescent on the palate. Didn't get the effervescence on the palate at all. And the finish was mid to long, honey, and creme brulee and fresh berries. I got a little of that honey, but the fresh berries and camp creme brulee, not even close. Uh, that, uh, yeah, I still, I didn't realize I'm doing better on this than I thought I would, but this is actually really, really interesting because it does train the palate. I think after I'm done with this, I'm gonna go back after all of these and try them all again and see what I might get differently after looking at the tasting notes because I don't know about you guys, but I definitely do that where if I taste something, I go back at it again with the tasting notes in front of me, I'm gonna get different things uh, or realize that if something is there, my brain's gonna click on it. So let's take a look at the third one at, at C and see what that is. Uh, see, these get better as they go in my opinion. First one's very good, second one was okay. Uh, third one was back to pretty good and then I like the fourth one the best, I think. So sample D is, what the heck? A dad's Best World Barrel Select. Uh, Dark Door Spirits, Dad's Best World Solara Blend Bourbon. So I did nail that, that is the Solara. I did get a hint on that. Uh, I did get a hint on that there was gonna be a Solara in there. This one seemed very, uh, had, had hints of a very old bourbon to it. And I gotta imagine that they're not sending out a whole lot of very old bourbons in these things. So that was just a blind guess. I did have a hint on that. Uh, so I, you could take that as a cheat. 
Um, I put down 115 proof. It is 121 proof, so I was way off on that. Uh, I did guess cast strength, so I guess I'll give myself a W there. Berry, cola, and tobacco. Uh, this is a non-age stated, obviously, because of the Solera blend. You could have all kinds of crazy stuff in there. You could have 18-year uh, whiskey and two-year whiskey, so you can't age state it at anything higher than two, so they just put a non-age statement on it. It's a 74% corn, 13% rye, and 13% barley. Uh, that's interesting that the barley, I really wasn't picking up a whole lot on the barley effect on that. To aroma, marzipan, vanilla, strawberry, cherry, and Danish. Tasting notes are molasses, nutty, pepper, fruit, orange, tobacco, and vanilla. I got some of that. It said coats the mouth, I guess, sure. Uh, it had a pretty good finish on it. I actually guessed that it was a finished whiskey. I didn't get that right. It is not a finished whiskey, so a uh, big L on that one. But that's actually really, really good. I like the Solara. If you do Solara right, I know that Stitzel Weller does a lot of Solara stuff. It can add some maturity and some interesting complexity to younger whiskeys, and I think it's a really cool idea. So let's move on to D and the last one. So sample D was the one that I really liked the best. Uh, I thought it was uh, really, really interesting in a cast strength. There's some notes on there. I was definitely getting sherry. I'm gonna stand by that. I hope I'm right on that because I really do love sherry finish stuff. Uh, this was not super subtle in the sherry, but there were some other things in there that I just couldn't quite put my finger on. So I'm really curious to see what it is. So sample D is, good Lord, it's the Good Times Cigar Finish. I'm actually familiar with this one. Uh, good Times out of uh, Indiana. Uh, I was off on the proof by quite a bit. I said 115, it's 121. Uh, no, it's 108. Uh, that's interesting. All right, so they got a picture of a different bottle in here that's 121, but they put that the proof is 108. Either way, I botched it. This is the A Good Times Bourbon Cigar Blend Bourbon Single Barrel Strength Bourbon Whiskey finished in Cognac, Armagnac, and Oloroso Sherry. Nailed the sherry. Didn't pick up on the con uh, Cognac and Armagnac. I totally botched that. That's a 75% uh, corn, 21% rye, 4% malted barley. I put coffee, sherry, fruit, honey, baking spices, and 115 proofs. I guess it was finished. I guess I'm right on that. Uh, but it says uh, nose is leather, latte, wood, cognac, honey, and pecans. And the tasting note is nutmeg, sherry, honey, tannin, and caramel corn. I that's, See, tannin is one of the notes that now that I've said it, I, I definitely recognize that it's in there. I didn't really put my finger on that when I was tasting it. And then it said long finish, lingering heat, cinnamon, baking spices, and a bit of charcoal. I didn't get any charcoal in that, but that's D. I think I did okay on this one. I'm still working. Things like this are really, really helpful in trying to train your palate. I think this is going to be a good one for me. I'm going to go back through it again. I'm not going to subject you guys to that. And with the tasting notes and try and see if I can put my hands, uh, my finger on more of those notes and hopefully help myself improve a little bit in my tasting skills, which if you're out there tasting whiskey, don't be too hard on yourself. This is not that easy to do. There are people that are very, very good at it, but they're either oddly blessed or very well trained through a lot of practice to be able to do that. Uh, I am not going to say that I can just pick up something and guess what it is. I'm actually quite bad at it and botch things quite a bit. But if you get a chance to try the blind barrels, I suggest that you do. I will put links in the description of this video for you to check it out. I am not sponsored by blind, by blind barrel. I just thought this was a really cool thing to do and share with you guys and to do it on video on a long format. If this gets a little long, I'm sorry, but uh, I'll spice some things in to mix it up. But I'm Conrad. This is Whiskey Bonded and this is Blind Barrels and you check it out on their website. Um, I may do another one of these. I think this is really, really cool and I love blind tasting even though uh, more often than not, I did pretty well on this one, but more often than not, I'm really, really bad at this and tend to embarrass myself. So thanks for coming. Please like, comment and subscribe check out my shorts go check me out on tiktok and instagram we have a patreon all that stuff is in the link in the video and thank you for sticking around and watching this long if you watched all the way to the end you know what? you're a real trooper and i appreciate you a lot because nobody watches to the end of these videos statistically i mean really like like nobody does but anyway for those of you that are still here cheers to you and thanks for watching so what should we do now I guess I'll just go back to drink it. You're welcome to stick around and join me if you want to. No, just kidding. We're done. Subscribe to the channel.